I do indeed know what you did last picosecond. Okay, all right, well, if you're an anthroquinone anyway. So anthroquinones are molecules with structures like the ones you see at the top left. And for about the last 4,000 years, we've been using them to paint ourselves and the town red. From warfare, through art, to clothing, medicine, and food, the cultural heritage of the entire world is just littered with anthroquinones. Two of the oldest and most beloved of our anthroquinones are alizarin and pepurin, the two main components of a red dye called matter. Small catch for the uh, museums and galleries out there, matter is absolutely notorious for fading. So we've had our love-hate relationship with matter and its fading glory since at least ancient Egypt, so we must know what's going on there, right? Actually, we kind of don't have a clue. Uh, we know it's the interaction between matter and light that causes it to fade, and of those two main components, we know purpurin fades faster than alizarin, but we are totally in the dark when it comes to exactly why. Well, that's where my project comes in. We need an eye in the sky, a fly on the wall, some way to see what it is about the interaction between matter and the light that ultimately destroys it. So, what's this light molecule interaction anyway? Well, when light hits a molecule, that molecule is catapulted up into a high energy excited state. From there, it can relax back down to the ground state, it can react with other molecules, or it can undergo its own personal little Armageddon, and your priceless Vermeer winds up looking a lot less kissable than it did before. There's one more catch. Our spy is going to have to be really fast to tell us why a molecule would take that last option. What's normal speed for these molecules is insanely fast for us. We see them fade over hundreds of years, but the processes that are causing it are only like a picosecond long. That is a thousandth of a billionth of a second. Fortunately, we have some pretty awesome surveillance tools at our disposal in the form of ultra-fast transient absorption spectroscopy. This is like multi-flash photography for molecules, and it allows us to resolve that picosecond timescale activity. Like the diver, the electrons and nuclei in the excited molecule are moving in space and time. And by taking a series of sneaky surveillance snapshots at various times after that excitation, we can build up a picture of that movement as it occurs. Now, our surveillance snapshots look like the ones in the center of the slide. The red signal is the excited state, and if we plot that out for each of those molecules as a function of time, we can see that by the time alizarin has relaxed back down to the ground state safely, perpurin's still all excited. It stays there for like 2,000 picoseconds, 20 times longer than alizarin, and therefore, it has more chances to fade. So, now that we have an idea of what's going on, we can work to protect the cultural heritage that contains these anthroquinones, and maybe even see if we can reverse damage that's already occurred. So I have a message for all you anthroquinones out there. I know what you did last picosecond in your fading days are numbered. <laughs>